Media. Welcome to Detroit. Temperatures as low as one below zero here today, but it's a perfect post-holiday season setting for college football. We're glad to welcome you to the Quick Lane Bowl as a part of Capital One Bowl Mania. The first meeting between the Duke Blue Devils out of the ACC, a record of 6-6 six and six in the regular season, and Rod Carey's Northern Illinois Huskies out of the MAC with a record of 8-4. and four. So glad to have you here with us today. Mike Cousins and Ray Bentley, Allison Williams, will join us from the field as well. It's a very familiar setting here at Ford Field for NIU. They played here now seven out of the last eight years. Now Duke, to get here, had a little bit of a rocky road. They started off 4-0, and and then things got tough. Yeah, and then depression set in, basically, as they lost their next six in a row. And that 4-0 that start was really something for them. I mean, they came out, they beat a Northwestern team, but then the... the they had to play their ACC schedule, and things got a little different. They lost six in a row, but four of those by only seven points, and one of them by five points. They had to win their last two against Georgia Tech and Wake Forest. They only were given an 11% chance to do it, but they pulled through, and that's why the Blue Devils are here today. David Cutcliffe has them in their most successful bowl era in school history. NIU didn't make it to the MAC championship game this year. They picked up a big win against Nebraska to start the year, and their defense was the strong point of their team throughout the year, including one guy at defensive end. Right, Sutton Smith. He's an All-American, and he is one of the best pass rushers you'll ever have the pleasure of seeing. And they love to put him on the edge and basically send him into the backfield to create mayhem. Don't give him a lot of responsibilities other than getting after the quarterback, and boy, can he do that. He's one of those guys that keeps his feet rolling all the time. Just a young player, and he's going to be good down the road. And they've got another young player on offense that they're going to need to be good down the road, and that's their quarterback, Marcus Childers. He uh, ended up starting seven games this year, had a 5-2 and two record, and he throws the ball extremely well. And as you might expect from a Husky quarterback, he's a very good runner. Coach compared him to Drew Hare. I asked him, Jordan Lynch, he said, no, not quite there. But we'll see how he does here tonight, the young quarterback getting it done. He's been great since taking over as starter October 14th without some of his biggest weapons today, though. Allison will tell us more about that when we come back with kickoff from Detroit. Bowl games mean extra practices, which can be great for teams. But in the case of Northern Illinois, as they get set here to start against Duke, Allison Williams, that only meant more players added to the list of the injured. Yeah, most teams are able to get healthy with the break between the end of the regular season and bowl games for NIU. Simply not the case, as they will have to take the field without three senior offensive weapons. Their leading rusher, Jordan Huff, will not play today following ankle surgery. Tight end, Shane Wyman, out with turf toe. Also, receiver and return man, Chad Beebe, will not play with abdomen injury. Injuries. These three guys have combined for almost 1,500 yards. They've scored 14 touchdowns. I just spoke to head coach Rod Carey. He said we lose a lot of explosiveness and our best route runner, but the guys that have to step up have played all year. This is their time. He said tonight we'll get a preview of next year's offense. All right, Allison, well, for the 46-year-old from Madison, Wisconsin, today a big one after starting his coaching career 23 years ago outside of Minneapolis in high school football. Blue Devils winners of the toss, they defer. And so the kick is up, DJ Brown and Jalen Embry back deep. And here comes Brown without BB on the kickoff return team. And he's out to the 19 yard line where Marcus Childers and the Huskies offense take over first. And Childers, as I mentioned at the top of the show, very accurate with the short passing game. The one place he hasn't quite developed it yet, at least from watching him on tape, is that deep ball. And they're going to need to throw it down the field against this Duke defense here this afternoon. Offense this year under Childers, averaging 30 points a game, 49th best in FBS. As you mentioned, he can run it. And so they start out empty backfield and allow him a chance to scamper as he goes out to the 23. Yeah, that's just get your young quarterback a hit right, right away so he can shake the butterflies. Quarterback draw out of the empty set, spread him out, and see what the youngster can do. I think they're really going to miss Jordan Huff today, their, their top running back. And it'll be on Trey Harbison and Marcus Jones to pick up that slack. 
They play with multiple tight ends and like to move them around quite a bit. There with one in the backfield to throw to another tight end. And that's off the hands of Daniel Crawford, the redshirt sophomore from here in Michigan. Yeah, and you mentioned they get all those tight ends in there. And then they like to shift and move them around. And that can create issues for the defense. A lot of times they'll end up with an unbalanced line when they get into those situations. And it's, you know, defense has to go through the mental gymnastics to figure out, okay, who do I have and which gap do I have? Because those things change quickly when they shift. Third down and six, a four-man rush from the Blue Devils, and the throw to the sticks intended for Blake goes incomplete under strong coverage from the sophomore corner, Mark Gilbert, and it brings the punt team on the field. And Mark Gilbert had uh, base glove coverage over on Blake. There was no chance for that one, and the Huskies come out and worried about this offense if they're going to be able to get something going, you know, missing their top runner and uh, one of their better players, the tight end. They're going to have to figure out a way to get the chains moving here to this afternoon. Now here's Matt Ferentz, the freshman from St. Louis, averaging 41 yards a kick this year. And that punt right there sets a school record for NIU. 82nd punt of the year, the most they've had in a single season. Punt of 45 yards sets up the offense for the Blue Devils. Six and six with Daniel Jones, another underclassman in this game at quarterback. Yeah, the redshirt sophomore, he ended up starting last year because of an injury to Thomas Sirk, and he didn't anticipate starting that. But he made his way through that season, and he has developed during this season. Our Coach Cutcliffe told us he struggled during that six-game losing streak with injuries, where a lot of guys wouldn't have even played. But Jones was able to fight his way through it and has been outstanding the last two games. Wilson, the running back, came in motion. He takes the pitch and gets cut down at the ankles back inside the 30-yard line for the senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And that was Jawan Johnson making the tackle. Johnson's one of the playmakers on this defense as a linebacker. Had five interceptions. That was the second most in the country for linebackers. Handoff for Wilson. And just back to about the original line of scrimmage. So the opening drive brings up third down and long here for Duke. Passing situation for the Blue Devils. Nine different players for them with at least ten catches this season. Jones is back to throw. Relatively low amount of pressure. And he throws across the middle, Chris Taylor, who got just past the sticks to help pick up a first down. They did a great job of protection, and they doubled Sutton Smith from the edge, didn't allow him to get anywhere near Jones, and then he split those defenders and threw a nice little pass, and they moved the chains on a third and long. And Ray, that's something that Sutton Smith, number 15 in the red and black, is gonna expect to see a lot. At the top of the screen on this play. He's just basically gotten used to that. He's kind of a, a film study rat at this point, trying to figure out ways that teams are going to try and scheme against him. Yeah, and I, you know, it, there's one way of looking at film where, okay, I'm looking at the schemes, but then there's a, you look at the individuals and their idiosyncrasies and, and uh, you know, is their stance different in this play or that thing? He gets down to the fine, minute details, and he's able to steal a lot of good plays out of it. Jones wants to throw. He's got another completion at the sticks. It's Taylor again. Right in front of Albert Smalls. Nice timing on this route. And that's one of the things they like about Daniel Jones. He, that ball comes out of his hands immediately, and he's got a whip. He can get the ball, get some steam on it, and he also throws it really well down the field. First and 10 into Huskies territory from the NIU 45. Collision in the backfield. It sends Wilson out of his way. And then Smith circles all the way around the defensive end, makes the tackle at the line of scrimmage after the collision with the center, Austin Davis. And he tr Duke tried to pull a couple of offensive linemen, and the great push up front from 94, Devin Webster, kind of blew that play up before it got going. Second and 10, check down throw goes behind Wilson as it spun over his shoulder out of bounds. And it's another third down and 10. 
And that one got, uh, got away from Jones a little bit. That's a rare, inaccurate throw from him. 56% completion rate on the year for Jones. Also a pretty capable rusher who scored six times on the ground over 400 yards. Yeah, at six foot five, he's got really long strides. He eats the ground up quickly. He's got time over the middle and off the left hand of his tight end, Daniel Helm, who was open and the throw was just a hair too long, fourth down. And Jones put a little too much heat on that one. That's a seam route. You gotta have a little touch on that ball to let your guy run under it. Wasn't able to do it. Punt team on and it's Willie Holmquist, the grad transfer from Tufts, who is replacing Austin Parker, kicked off the team after an academic violation. And so Holmquist takes over kicking and punting duties today. The native of Dix Hills, New York, and a nice spinner, fair catch called for at the nine by Jalen Embry. NIU and Duke in the quick lane bowl first quarter. So far, just trading punts. Make sure you go see Star Wars The Last Jedi. It's now playing in theaters and IMAX everywhere. We're here at Ford Field, the home of the Detroit Lions. My cousins, Ray Bentley, Allison Williams, down on the sideline. Glad you're here with us as part of the holiday season at Capital One Bowl Mania. So both teams punting on their first drives. And after a fair catch, it's first down and 10 for the Huskies here from their own nine yard line. Yeah, three and out in their first drive. You can get something rolling. And for Marcus Childers, he's got the redshirt freshman from North Carolina, Trey Harbis in there with him in the backfield. And that's who gets it. For a gain of maybe one, taken down by Edgar Serenor. Harbison's a guy that jumped out at you, Ray, on tape, though, right? Yeah, I, I was impressed with his power, and in particular, the way he runs between. He gets them shoulders down and, and keeps them, you know, uh, parallel with the line of scrimmage, and he's a low. And he's in motion here, second and ten. Again, NIU without its leading rusher on the year, Jordan Huff. A long throw and a nice open field tackle on DJ Brown. Brought down by Ben Humphreys, a guy who they're very happy to have back. Number 34 for Duke. Missed the last two games with an injured knee and one of their best defenders. And they thought they had the matchup they wanted. They run a whip route with Brown against the linebacker, but Humphreys is too savvy. He didn't bite on the inside cut of it and was able to respond and run it down for a two yard gain. Five-man rush, Childers tucks it. Does he have the elusiveness? Not enough to get a first down. They started at the nine and only got out to about the 16-yard line as the safety Marquise Waters brings him to the turf. Watch this little move Childers is going to make in, in open field. <laughs> he basically left somebody standing, and uh, that shows you the kind of ability he has out in open field to run, but it wasn't enough to move the game. Well, they've got to get some more push for him. Five and two as a starter ever since he took over in the middle of October. That was the third quarterback of the year at that point for NIU. Ramming meanders his way out to the 43-yard line on the punt return. Year number 10 for the 62-year-old native of Birmingham, Alabama, David Cutcliffe. It's been five bowls in the last six years now, which represents just a spectacular era of Duke football after they'd been to only two bowl games from 1962 to 2011. Yeah, and they've been lighting it up in those bowl games, averaging over 39 points. So they, they've had exciting games. They've only managed to win the one, but they, they're a good uh, bowl team. How was that 2015 pinstripe bowl victory over Indiana at Yankee Stadium? They start here from the 43, and it's a quick throw. Sean Wilson, the running back, has been an early target of the quarterback, Daniel Jones. And they'll do that. They like to move these backs out on the edge, both Wilson and Britton Brown, who we'll see in this ball game. And they create matchup issues. And that one was just a real quick pitch and catch to try and 
matriculate down the field here a little bit. Get ahead of the change. Second target of the day for the tight end Helm. He makes the catch and carries two defenders with him as he goes out of bounds for a first down. And this is just a triple option. But instead of a pitch at the end, it's a pass at the end. And a great read there by Daniel Jones. He sees that his guy out on the edge. Just didn't have him run it. Easy throw. And they get it out and move the chains. First down. Smith pressuring from the backside, and it forced Jones into a bad throw. He's only six foot 225, but a former running back and linebacker shows his speed off the line. He is trying to find Sean Wilson, his running back, who's running a shoot route right down the seam. The safety came over, and that's why he had to pull it down, and then some Smith closed in, and Jones had to throw it away. But they were trying to take a shot into the end zone there. On the ground, here's Britton Brown. Tumbling forward toward the 30-yard line, right to the first down marker, and maybe a nose of the ball short. Yeah, and Brown and Wilson are pretty much interchangeable at this running back position, and there's not a whole lot of drop-off between them, and both of them are outstanding open field type runners that can make you miss. Pretty even distribution of carries between those two guys as well for Wilson. The senior, 146 carries in the regular season. And for Brown, who had the carry, the redshirt freshman, 117 carries for him. Yeah, and then Daniel Jones gets in the mix. He had 145 carries, including that last one on the sneak for the first down. Here comes pressure up top, a bobble and a catch by Davis Copenhaver. So the tight ends getting involved on the drive with Helm and Copenhaver to get them inside the 10. And Duke likes to go fast after they get first downs in this area of the field. Looks like they're looking over and taking their time a little bit here. They love the tight ends in this area. In the red zone, they'll throw pop passes and they'll throw quick outs to it. Brown's the running back. Sutton Smith bear hugs him from behind. Yeah, they did not block Smith on the edge. They had everything else blocked up on the inside. There's nowhere to go. And Wilson had to cut back right into the waiting arms of Sutton Smith. The consensus All-American and MAC Defensive Player of the Year leading the country in sacks and tackles for a loss. That fooled there. There's some running room on the corner for the lanky six foot five Jones who's cut down short of the goal line by the linebacker Bobby Jones. And that's another little wrinkle in Coach Cutcliffe's offense, having the quarterback keep the ball a lot more often down in the red zone. And that was by design. That was not a read as he had the tight end, uh, Copenhaver, out front blocking the way for him. From two yards out, a push straight ahead. And the initial marking is short for Brown. So fourth down, just about a yard away from Pater. And true freshman defensive tackle, Weston Kramer, number 55, is at the bottom of that pile of humanity making the play. All right, Ray, doubled up on the tight ends to the left side here on fourth down. Quarterback run. You called it, six nothing Blue Devils, as Jones has his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And you can see it, especially the way Northern Illinois, they were playing that inside run. They had everybody jammed up in there, and guys, they, they get excited in this area of the field. Now, somebody had quarterback as their responsibility, but they didn't get him, and they'll be watching film later on and, and be having to answer why. And that was just real easy for Jones, a nice read. Great scheme and a good drive by the Blue Devils. And to what you said earlier, from that distance, if nobody's going to go step for step with Jones, it's too easy for him. 6'5", his strides are so long. Right, half a step and he's in. Nice drive. They got everybody involved. And Jones takes it in to put Duke on the board first. Quick Lane Bull. Brought to you by Quick Lane Tire and Auto Centers, offering extraordinary service for routine maintenance. Quick Lane, ready to serve. 
and the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? Duke out front, 6-0 over Northern Illinois. Back here in Detroit, Mike Cousins, Ray Bentley, Allison Williams down on the sidelines as D.J. Brown takes the return out to the 19-yard line. And the Huskies look to get something churning on offense here, Ray, after a couple of three and outs to start the day. And they've been stymied by this Duke defense here early on. As you mentioned, two three-and-out series, and they really, and the best play they had was a quarterback scramble. So far, this has been a game played on just about 70 yards of turf with NIU unable to get the ball into Duke territory except for on punts. Childers on the rollout. It has nothing to do with it except for throwing it away. Saw Christian Blake, number four for NIU there, is the early motion man, and that's something they do a lot, even though they may not give him the ball for the entire game. Yeah, well, usually they'll, they'll do it as a counter punch late in the game is what I've seen him do with that, but that jet sweep look is always a threat. Defenses have to honor it, and the other thing it does, it kind of screens the vision of the linebackers in the secondary as to who's got the football. It's a nice little scheme. Shoulder has tucked it and got undercut by the sophomore safety, Dylan Singleton. Yeah, that was quarterback draw all the way, and there's just nowhere to go. Singleton, the extra man in the box, came up and made the play. He got his first start of the season last week, or last time out against Wake Forest, and played really well. Nine tackles and two broken up passes. Third down and 10, trying to avoid a third straight three and out to start the day. And he's grabbed around the ankles and taken down back at the 10 yard line by Trayvon McSwain, who made the play from the ground. Yeah, that was a great effort from McSwain. You know, he was basically the post guy, and the other tackle, Ramsey, was looping around him. Watch this stunt that they run. And McSwain, he's just going to get on the ground and just crawl his way up to make a sack. That's pretty good stuff. Nice showing by the Duke defense, which is playing without Jeremy McDuffie, one of their safeties, and one of their team leaders as well. Oh, well, here's a fake and a throw toward the sideline, and this could be very dangerous for NIU. Uh, dangerous is a nice way to put it. Uh, that wasn't the smartest call I've ever seen in my life, and now the Blue Devils are set up to go ahead even more with a 7-0 lead. I'm going to take you to the desert tonight for more of Capital One Bowl Mania here on ESPN. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Could be the last game for K-State head coach Bill Snyder or for UCLA quarterback Josh Rosen in the Cactus Bowl, also available on the ESPN app. First down at the 11 here for Duke and Daniel Jones. And for more on the quarterback, here's Allison. What we're seeing today is a healthy Daniel Jones, and that was finally the case towards the end of the regular season, but that wasn't the case, case for several games. The coaches just called it a significant upper body injury. While he was always able to play, it certainly affected his ability to throw to the point where in practices they oftentimes charted how many throws he had just to make sure they weren't overworking him. I talked to him about it. He said it was just some bumps and bruises. I feel fortunate to have been out there every game. But coaches tell you some of those errant passes that we saw during the middle of the season, much more on target when he's healthy. Offside, defense number seven. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Well, thanks, Allison, for that information. And, Ray, when you watched film, did you happen to pick up any areas of concern that may have been that injury? Uh, you know, to me, I think it was a non-throwing shoulder. This is my best guess, but they were very tight-lipped about it. And honestly, watching him play, 
couldn't see anything where he was protecting himself uh, in a specific area. So I, you know, I, I have no idea what it was. But I know this, he's much healthier now. He's been able to run, no problem. Get the throws off okay as well. Gives it off there to Wilson. I'm still trying to get over that fake punt on fourth and 18 from your own 11 yard line. I, I, that might be the biggest bonehead play of the uh, call of the year. And I, I, we saw Rod Carey laughing about it a little bit afterwards with somebody, but my goodness, that, that makes absolutely no sense on any level. Time and score, it's certainly puzzling. And then to throw after a, a deep sack with a throw that didn't reach the stick certainly does raise a lot of questions. Another run through the middle. The pile gets a good push for Wilson. I think he quite got there. Just short again. He gets up in behind that offensive line and got great push from their third team all ACC center, Austin Davis. Opened up a little bit of a scene. He almost got in there. And now we've got whistles before the snap. The ruling on the field is that the runner was short of the goal line. The previous play is under review. Look to see if he got in. I, I didn't think so. James Carter, our referee today, and the replay official here at Ford Field is Ron Leatherwood. They must have saw something upstairs where they, they wanted to have a little more time to take a look. Now, that's the play that was uh, stopped. Here's the, the end of the other one. That's a tough look to see it. You can see him barely. This might be the best look we have at it, but you can't tell because you're not looking down the line if he got in. From where he's at right now, it's hard to say. This would be the definitive look. But it's the it's not the right play. Well, it'll be first, it, no matter what, it'll be first and goal here if the call stands as it was on the field, if there's no touchdown. So they've got plenty of options. As we saw, their first touchdown was a one-yard run for Daniel Jones. And then you've got Wilson and Brown. Has other options as well to come out of the backfield. And now it looks like we've got a decision on the field. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Duke. It was really hard to see from the angles. Even that last one we had right down the goal line, too many bodies in the way. So you have to really leave it as it is and let them play on. I'm wondering what they saw to make them stop it and, and take a closer look. Duke will spread you out down in this area and then run the football. And that's what they've got three wide receivers in the mix. Tight end off to the left. Instead, a leap up top, and it's a touchdown for Sean Wilson. The senior from Charlotte makes NIU pay for a fake punt from its own end zone. The lead is 13-0 Blue Devils. Great blocking up front by the left side of that line. The tackle, Gabe Bradner and the guard, Julian Santos. Both of them collapsed the Husky defense down, allowing Wilson to get in there for the six. And Holmquist for the extra point. He's got it. Take a look at that touchdown again. And this is just manhandling people up front and then a back going up over the top. And when you only got to get about a half a yard, that's how you do it. You grind them right out get over the top and get in the end zone. And Duke has got command of this game now. And you mentioned it, Mike, and as did I, and I, I'm still not over it. <laughs> the, the fake punt call out of their own end zone. Well, it's going to put a lot more pressure on their offense here to try and get something going after they were headed for three straight three and outs before that fake punt. And a team that in its regular season finale jumped out to a 17-0 lead over CMU and could not hang on to that advantage and ended up losing to the Chippewas in Mount Pleasant. And futility is the name of the game for this Husky offense so far. Three three and outs, their longest play covered six yards, and their furthest advance has been to their own 23. Brown again. Woo takes a lick 
Out to the 15-yard line from Dylan Singleton, guy who's used to delivering blows out of the secondary. And Singleton's a starter in the secondary now, but they got him covering kicks. And Boy, he got down there along with Hill, and, and they made life miserable for D.J. Brown there. You mentioned the farthest advance. Field position hasn't been great to start to begin with. This is their fourth drive. They've started twice at the 19, once at the 9, and here at the 15-yard line. And that puts a lot of pressure on Childers, the freshman quarterback. The guy who's today making only the eighth start of his career. Switch to an unbalanced line here. Trey Harbison gets the carry. No Jordan Huff today, the leading rusher on the year for NIU. 740 yards, four touchdowns. So they've got Harbison, Marcus Jones, and then much more likely used Tommy Mister. And the three of those combined for about the same yardage as Huff and six touchdowns. Jordan Huff is a special ball player. He can stay healthy. Here we go. There is some running room for Childers. Save an ankle tackle that stopped him at the 31. Singleton again and a burst for 13 and perhaps something going for NIU. And they caught Duke with their, their two defensive tackles out wide. Look at that huge hole naturally in the middle and that creates an angle for the blocks. A nice read by Childers and boy he was a half step from busting that thing out. Duke got out of that defensive front formation they were in quickly. They fake the give and now drop it off underneath. And it's Brown speeding up the sideline. Ball comes loose as he gets undercut at midfield. And fortunately for the Huskies, the fumble out of bounds on a play of 20 yards. Yeah, that's a nice hit coming across by uh, Byron Fields. The initial coverage was, was by uh, Ben Humphreys, and Humphreys ain't running quite well. He took a bad angle. But there's the hit, knocked the ball right out from Brian, Byron Fields, Jr. A little bit of a bobble. Here's a throw downfield, incomplete, as it was Blake attempting his fourth pass of the year. Falling just short, intended for the tight end, Daniel Crawford. And Joe Giles Harris. The All-ACC second-team All-American linebacker is the one who got the pressure on there that forced that throw quicker than, than what they wanted to throw it. Watch number 44, this middle linebacker for Duke. They'll move him all over the place. He'll rush off the edge, but he is stout and probably the primary reason Northern Illinois can't run the football right now. Quick toss for the running back, Harbison. Eludes one tackle. And from second and ten, it'll be third down and much more manageable for Rod Carey's squad. They got a little bit of a drive going here. They got to be able to finish it, though. And they're getting close. This could even be considered four down territory here. They might not have to get it all on this down. I mean, they're, they're faking punts from their end zone. <laughs> hey, end zone. Why wouldn't they go for it here? Last game of the season. Can't hold anything back. Anything's on the table. They've got the Mac freshman of the year at quarterback. And a third down and seven to try and keep the drive alive. He faked the run, looked like he was going to throw, and then recommitted to it. Finds himself three yards shy of the sticks. Yeah, he tried to give him that quarterback draw look where he ducks down, and then people think, okay, if he lowers his weight, he's going to run the football. And then he popped back up, and he was going to throw it, but it wasn't there, so we had to go back down. And Ray, it didn't look like there was any uh, indication of special teams coming no. on at all here on fourth down and three. They, they were going to go for it from, from third down on, I think. Option play. He keeps it and gets buried. Giles Harris, the first man on the scene. The Blue Devils force a turnover on downs. And Giles Harris beat a crackback block to get there. Now, that's hard to do. Now granted, it's just the receiver coming down on you, but he blindsides you. You don't see it coming, yet you fight through it. And that's a heck of a strong play from Giles Harris. So despite a longer drive, this is just about where punts had ended up after NIU's first two drives that had ended punts with the third being the failed fake pass or the failed fake punt. And then a complete pass. 
Jones throwing, nearly had that ball taken away, going over the middle. McKelty Williams, the safety, colliding with Jonathan Lloyd. That's a great play by Williams because that's an RPO where the underneath coverage is committed to the box. There's nobody underneath to help him out. He went over the shoulder and broke it up. Single safety coverage here and a quick throw to the perimeter. It's a nice tackle on Lloyd. Same matchup with Williams. Duke's offensive line coming off a great game against Wake Forest, Allison. Yeah, and guys, it was interesting to hear their offensive line coach, Jim Bridge, talk to his guys about the way NIU is playing with the fake punts and go for it, going for it on fourth down. He said that means they're going to junk it up, and they came to play. We have to stay alert. They've already seen three different fronts already in this game. They just saw a little twist start on that. Jones went back foot. And it's Brown, short of the first down marker. First quarter here in Detroit, an interesting That's the end of the first one. Quarter. Duke getting on the board Nine first. Out. NIU trying to get a little bit tricky. Pinned back in its own end zone. A fourth down pass gone awry. The Blue Devils add to their lead at the end of one quarter. 14 nothing Duke. Your Cotton Bowl Classic from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Sam Darnold, number one pick in Todd McShay's latest mock draft. One of five top 40 prospects in this game. Going up against JT Barrett, USC and Ohio State. 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. We are back here at Ford Field in Detroit. One quarter gone between Duke and Northern Illinois in the quick lane bowl. My cousins, Ray Bentley and Allison Williams reporting from the field. And we've got a fourth down here for David Cutcliffe and Duke right near midfield. And they do not look inclined to kick it away. No, I mean, I wouldn't expect them to do anything but go for it here. Maybe try and draw them off sides. You look at this last play. After review, play. the last play was an incomplete pass. Remains fourth down. And that ball got knocked out before Brown had uh, possession. So they called that one incomplete, and now the punt team comes out. Yeah, I was surprised that the call immediately on the field was for a complete pass, seeing as he never made any move after the ball went to the ground. Or I should say preceding the ball going to right. the ground. Knocked out cleanly. Holmquist. Got a piece of it. Yeah, that ball got tipped, but it does continue to take a Blue Devil roll to the 31-yard line. Keep in mind, he had no punts on the year coming into this game, replacing Austin Parker. Jackson Abresh getting in there, and it's not the first time that he's gotten his hands on a punt this year. Got it. A little bit of it, and then he did hit the kicker's leg, the plant leg, too, but because he got a piece of the ball, no infraction. So here's the best starting field position of the day for NIU. Most of the time they've been starting back inside their own 20. Let's see if they can do something with it. Childers fakes the give and he's going deep. Short ball and it's caught. Pulled in by Spencer Tears. <laughs> That's just throwing up and hope my guy gets it. They call it a 50-50 ball, and uh, that one might have been 49-51, but it didn't matter because the receiver, Tears, got his eyes back, and nobody else did, and he found that ball. Childers to Tears for 45 yards. All the way down to the Duke 25-yard line. See if that opens up this Duke defense at all. And a big hole through the left side, headed toward the end zone. Trey Harvison. Gives the Huskies a chance to cut the Duke lead in half. A run from 25 yards out. You see it happen so often where all of a sudden they throw it over your head. The next play, the defense gets gashed on a run. And that's a heck of a block by Luke Shively, the center, keeping the, the flow of the defense from getting over into the hole. And then Harvison just, I mean, no one even touched him. He just had to hit the gas pedal and away he went. 
That was a nice little drive. All of a sudden, that offense woke up by taking the deep shot. Showing exactly how proficient it can be when it's in the right gear. Christian Higgin with the extra point has now made 92 straight. Childers under pressure, helped the drive get going, finding tears downfield. All the Huskies needed was an explosive play. It's Harbison, the former Virginia Cavalier, scampers to the end zone. One Bowl Mania rolls on Wednesday with three more games on ESPN. 1.30 Eastern, Southern Miss squares off against Florida State in the Walk-Ons Independence Bowl. Then at 5.15, Iowa looks to snap a bowl slide, taking on Boston College and the New Era Pinstripe Bowl at Yankee Stadium. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. It's a couple of old Big 12 rivals in the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. Texas and Missouri. All three games available on the ESPN app. Could be a good finish to the year for Texas, trying to get them to 7-6, and six, which would be their first winning season since Mac Brown's last year as head coach in 2013. That is amazing. Uh, their ball was precipitous. Return from the seven-yard line out across the 20 for the running back, Sean Wilson, to get Duke set up here on this drive. Northern Illinois, just a two-play drive there for the score. Quite a change-up from what their first four drives were. Yeah, and that was really the first deep shot they had taken all day, all day long, and they need to do more of that. You saw the effect it had on the Duke defense because the, the subsequent play, the Huskies, who hadn't been able to run the ball at all during the course of the game, busted off a touchdown run. Those deep passes, they get inside that defense's head a little bit. Jones an immediate pitch and Wilson takes the carry yeah this is a play that I'm seeing more and more prevalent in college football it's a, a toss read where the quarterback is going to read the end man on the line and if that guy goes after the back the quarterback will keep it if he doesn't then he'll pitch it and it happens quickly Second down, trying to get a couple the hard way, and they don't. Sutton Smith, leading the FBS in sacks and tackles for a loss, helps lead the push. If he gets today one sack and one and a half tackles for a loss, he'll join just Terrell Suggs, who played at Arizona State, and Jason Babin from Western Michigan. He's the only three players to have done that since they started tracking individual defensive stats in 2000. Time in the pocket, ball pops loose and falls incomplete. Going for Chris Taylor, and it's fourth down and two. Yeah, apparently it hit him in a bad spot, <laughs> right in the hands. That, that's a good throw from the quarterback. Had to put a little heat on it, maybe too much. He was, you know, the receiver Taylor was pretty close to him, but it just bounced off of him. And that, that one, that's the one that's kind of a coach killer where he really drives him crazy. Where he said, hey, look, I came up with the exact right play. You guys just couldn't execute it. Nailed it. Much easier kick this time for Holmquist as Embry gets swallowed up on the return to the 31. A two-play touchdown drive. Last time they had the ball for NIU. Just down by seven here. As they take over, the defense getting the job done. That's what you expect from the Northern Illinois defense, which was very strong this year, averaging just 21 points a game against them, a top 30 number. And, and you know, their defense, they, they kind of fell apart a little bit in the second half of the last game against Central, Central Michigan. Michigan. They were up 17 to nothing at halftime, and it held the Chippewas to negative 33 total yards in the first half. And they lost 31 to 24. And the, the, the culprit was big plays. Uh, two 50 plus yard touchdowns they gave up, a run and a pass. So if you're going to get them, you got to gash them for a big one. Because down to down, they're pretty good. They'll stop you. Childers wanted to run. He escaped Giles Harris, but the rest of the defense closes in on him for a short game. So no Jordan Huff, the leading rusher today, no Chad Beebe. 
One of their top receivers out with an abdominal injury, as Allison detailed at the beginning of the broadcast, and Shane Wyman as well, their leading tight end, leading the team with seven touchdown catches. Plenty of time here, and another deep shot, a man wide open downfield. Jawan Wesley, he's gone, running like he's in Pamplona, into the end zone from 67 yards. With the Bulls, no less. That was a case of Michael Carter who had the coverage. He slipped on the double move trying to restart his motor and there was nobody left after he got past him. See, so he got to him, missed the tackle and then Wesley just took a nice little stroll into the end zone. But the double move caused the slip by Carter and that allowed the play to get open. Oh, how things have changed in an instant. Here in Detroit, down 14 nothing after an ill-advised fake punt from their own end zone. And all of a sudden, a couple of big plays have the eight-win Huskies right back in it. 14 all in the Quick Lane Bowl. The Quick Lane Bowl, brought to you by the 2018 Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar. It is the bar. Allstate, official protector of college football fans. And Marathon, fueling the American spirit. It's football, it's bowling. This is the Folding Warehouse in Hamtramck, about 10 minutes from the stadium here in Detroit. Now, you can have a couple of uh, pops when you're playing. Imagine how difficult it would be then if there's real football players <laughs> and it was tough for them. Yeah, I would like to give it a try. Just, <laughs> I don't know about the pops and all that, but I'd love to give it a run. What do you think, Allison? How'd you fare? Well, I, I would give both a try, personally. I didn't get to fare at all because I didn't get to play. But the guys that I talked to that did play absolutely loved it. It was hilarious. The first thing each one of them brought up when I asked them about their time in Detroit was the foaling. And you got to hear how competitive they were. Duke quarterback Daniel Jones not pleased they were not able to win the trophy. But he said it's because they didn't have their best guys out there because he wasn't able to play in the finals. Of course. Ah, uh, there's always a reason, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at that last touchdown again. I want to show you what happened with the defender, Michael Carter. He's in the slot, and he's got coverage. There he is. And watch how he, he, on the double move, he tries to react and change direction. He goes down, and that's what opened things up. And then to make matters worse, he missed the tackle on the comeback. Tough down for Carter. Big play for the Huskies. Two touchdown drives and two big passes for Childers. Now a chance for a response from Duke. Smith brings Brown to the ground. Nice little stunt that time. They had Sutton Smith run a loop to the inside where he's, he's always lined up on the edge as that rusher. He'll take a step up the field and then loop back inside, and that thing opened up for him perfectly. NIU very familiar with Ford Field. Rod Carey says his favorite game here, the 2011 MAC title game against Ohio. 23-20 final, coming on a last second field goal. Ball loose again and quickly scooped by Wilson. Yeah, that was a fortunate bounce for Wilson that the ball came back to him because Juwan Johnson was out there and broke that thing up. First he makes the blocker miss, and then he'll get his hand in there and knock the football out. That's a big time play. Duke was very fortunate to come up with that ball. Johnson's a playmaker out there. Five picks for him this year. He'll be looking for one here on third and 13. Throw over the middle and a hard hit by Michael Allen, the native of Detroit. The safety coming up to make the play. And that, that's a bad route, really, by Chris Taylor. You know, to catch a ball one yard shy of, of a first down on a third and 11, you have to run your route deep enough so that when you catch it, you have enough for the first down. And that time, Taylor cut it just a yard short. And the Huskies and Allen made a pay. Duke pondered it for a moment. And the punt team is on. And maybe 
they should have after that kick. Not the prettiest. It'll be great starting field position for the Huskies. A chance to take their first lead of the evening. First four drives of the day for NIU, 46 yards. Since then, nothing but points. Yeah, and they lit it up by throwing the ball deep. It's not like there's been great execution of deep balls, but they've gotten it done. That led to the running touchdown. In the next series, they come out and they hum another one deep down the field. And Wesley takes this one to the house. And uh, if I'm Northern Illinois, I'm going to keep chunking it down the field until they, they prove they can stop it. Because that's really been all their offense the whole game. Been able to test Duke deep for a team that's given up just 175 yards a game on average, 12th best in FBS this year. And they mix it up here on first down with the snap to Harbison. The running back for a gain of four, maybe five. Yeah, straight up Wildcat right there with Harbison. And, you know, I remember back in the day, Northern Illinois, they didn't need to put a uh, guy back there. They had a Jordan Lynch kid that was the best running back on the field pretty much every Saturday. And he's on this Northern Illinois coaching staff right now coaching running backs. Uh, he was a dangerous weapon from whatever he wanted to do with the ball. A guy who averaged seven yards per carry over the course of his career. It was all east-west there for the wide receiver Spencer Tears. Yeah, that's the... Jordan Lynch also led them to an orange ball, Allison, one of the best they've ever had. Yes, and now he is with the Huskies as the running backs coach, and it was pretty funny talking to offensive coordinator Mike Uramovich about it. He said, I think our running backs probably do more ball catching in individuals than any other running group in the country just because he likes to be out there throwing the ball. I asked Jordan if that was true before the game. He's like, yeah, it's true. And I'll tell you what, I saw him out before in warm-ups. He was out there throwing deep balls to the receivers. <laughs> Can't get enough throwing the ball. One of the greatest running quarterbacks of all time. Old habits and great skills certainly die hard for Jordan Lynch. So third down and long, pass goes incomplete. And the punt team on here in a much more favorable position than from perhaps previously in their own end zone. And Jordan Lynch was, was playing in the Canadian Football League and took a GA job in the offseason with Northern Illinois last year. And they had an opening for a coaching position. And Rod Carey came to him and said, I got this opportunity, but it's right now. So he retired from the CFL to coach in this uh, organization this past season. Well, it's not only a good hire for a guy who had an outstanding college playing career, but also to be back at his alma mater as a recruiting tool as okay. well to be able to bring players in. And the coaches preparing for this game had to go through the signing day period differently than years past with it falling during their bowl preparations. And David Cutcliffe did not like it. He, he thinks that it, it basically, they, they were trying to make it the, the calendar move backwards. It moved forward. Now you're going to have juniors visiting in the spring. And there's a lot of things that he didn't like about it. And Rod Carey didn't get into it too much, uh, whether he liked it or not. But they signed 24 guys, did Northern Illinois, and Duke signed 15 this past. David Cutcliffe said, without reservation, one of the worst pieces of legislation that college football's ever had. High throw and right to the sticks. They get more than 10. Daniel Helm, a redshirt junior from Illinois, makes his second catch of the day and goes for 17 yards. Nice little scheme there from Coach Cut and his offense, his court, offensive coordinator, Zach Roper. They ran the corner deep and then settled that tight end in his wake. Jones starts it out across the 40-yard line. Back-to-back -back completions. G.J. Ramming. Well, Duke in the first quarter scored two touchdowns. And so far here, approaching the midway point of the second. They've not been able to get the job done until that point. It had just been three and outs. I think Duke is going to throw the football around and that will open up the running game because the running game hasn't been great thus far. Britton Brown thinking he got away, but Jawan Johnson had a hand on him as the knee came down at the 45-yard line. The definitely, the, I saw the right elbow hit the ground and that, that'll make you down. And then, of course, it, obviously, uh, if the knee hits the ground, you're done. I think the knee stayed up, actually, and it was the elbow that got him. 
pretty good balance. Third down and three. Quarterback wants to do the job himself. Jones moves the sticks. Nice decision by Jones because Northern Illinois, uh, they blitzed Draquan Brown right off the edge where that fake was going to. He saw that coming, pulled it, and was able to power his way for that first down. Good read. With the blitz, tall in the pocket, and a one hopper over the middle of the field for Jones, who comes out of a very athletic family. His oldest sister played field hockey at Davidson. His younger brother, Bates, is a freshman forward on the Davidson basketball team. His youngest sister, Ruthie, she might be the most athletic of them all, a big time goalkeeper who's already committed to play soccer at Duke. Athletic family. Toss to the edge as Brown runs right through Jalen Embry, who did bring him down, another Detroit native out of Martin Luther King High School, and playing in place of the injured Shawan Lurie, a senior, another guy that we haven't really mentioned, who's out today for NIU. Yeah, Lurie, all Mac, cornerback, but had to have wrist surgery at the end of the season. And they're missing him as well. Last third down was a run by Jones. He goes through the middle again, and another first down as he lowers the shoulder into Michael Allen. Northern Illinois, they stacked their nose tackle, Kramer, as a linebacker. You see 55 there? And he, he makes the wrong decision and then gets chopped down on a good block from Zach Harmon, and that opened it up for Jones. First and ten for the Blue Devils, looking to retake their lead and taking their shot to the end zone. Touchdown, T.J. Ramming on a 33-yard throw from Daniel Jones. And the key to that one was the protection. And in particular, the blocking of Sutton Smith. He's on the left side at the bottom. Smith is over the tight end and he's going to come around the edge and they do a wonderful job of pushing him down allowing the time for jones to make the perfect throw landing the deep ball right into the arms of his top receiver ramming who's been consistent ever since he walked on campus but the extra point is no good again austin parker the primary kicker was kicked off the team earlier this year on December 8th, an academic policy violation. Holmquist had only kicked one PAT in the penultimate game of the regular season. And so his missed extra point makes the lead just six. The Blue Devils by six back here in Detroit. Let's go down to the sidelines and Allison with a special guest. Thank you, Mike. I am here with former Lions wide receiver, one of my favorites growing up here in Michigan, and current Quick Lane Bull ambassador, Herman Moore. Herman, I know you got a chance to talk to both of these teams last week. What was your message to some of these guys? Well, it was basically being men of character and also being accountable for your actions. And, and there's a lot that you're going to be faced with in life and just making sure that they understand that the choices that you make uh, will impact you in one way or another. As an ambassador for the Quick Lane Bowl, you have a pretty special job coming up at the half. What do you get to do? Well, we've been uh, going at it for a few months. You get to nominate a veteran. We're awarding five $10,000 scholarships to be used towards uh, automotive maintenance and repair certification as part of our Trading One uniform for another program. So we're pretty excited about that. Herman, thank you so much for the time. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Mike? Allison, the 11-year veteran of the Detroit Lions, also spent a year of his career with the Giants as well, has been a great ambassador in the time leading up to the bowl game here in Detroit. These guys got to spend a lot of time here in Detroit in the days preceding this evening's action. And from all accounts, really have enjoyed their experience. Yeah, and we, we talked to Art Chase, the SID for Duke, and he said, you know, we've been to uh, four, uh, four bowls in the last five years. This was the one that was the best one as far as the right mix of activities and downtime and all that. He said they had a wonderful time here. First and ten with the Huskies looking to answer 
Nice tackle by Singleton to tackle Blake. And a part of that getting ready for playing in this bowl game was getting to practice on this field where in so many other cases the practices are held elsewhere and not on the game surface. Right, it didn't help him on this little jet sweep <laughs> here though. As Singleton, he's been making plays all over the field today and he shot through and got that one. Making just his second start. You mentioned uh, Jerome or Jeremy McDuffie got injured and so they moved Saxton over to the other safety and moved Singleton up into that position, and he's been really good. This to Marcus Jones, the running back. It's the first time today that somebody other than Harbison has seen snaps in the backfield with Childers in the absence of their leading rusher, Jordan Huff. And now it's third and 11, where the Huskies have gone 0 for 5 today. Watch Gilbert make this uh, kick tackle, basically. I mean, this is just a trip, if you will. He knew it was coming. And with the legs out there, that actually should be a foul. Yeah. He got up and celebrated. No, no uh, penalty on the play. So inside five minutes before halftime, see if the Huskies can convert on third down for the first time. They're really missing their tight end, Shane Wyman. They have not thrown to a tight end yet in this ball game, and that's been a big part of their deal. Duke was showing a lot of pressure up along the line. And the Huskies take their first, first time out. First timeout, Northern Illinois. This will be a 30-second timeout. That's a, a wise timeout facing third and 11, you want to be sure. More Capital One Bowl Mania comes your way tonight on ESPN Ray. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. It's a game of intrigue. K-State, could this be the last game for Bill Snyder? He said he hasn't made up his mind yet. His Wildcats going up against UCLA. Concussion protocol for Josh Rosen in the Cactus Bowl. It's also available on the ESPN app. And Rosen had some interesting comments this week as well. Now that with the loss last week against Chicago, the Cleveland Browns have locked up the overall number one pick. And they are 0-15 this year, trying to avoid the dubious distinction of the Lions of yeah. going 0-16. He said he's not sure that he wants to necessarily go into the NFL draft. Well, I mean, if he's going to be the number one pick. That's a lot be, of money. He'd be staring at that. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, to me, I, I look at it as I'll go wherever you send me and we'll get it going there. That, that would be my attitude. And that was what Brown's defensive end, Miles Garrett, said as much this week. He said, look, the opportunity's there for all of us. Third and 11. Under pressure, a flick of the wrist. D.J. Brown dances up the sideline, does not get the yardage needed for a first down. Well, I, I think Childers missed this one. He had his tight end open on a uh, stack route at the sticks. Watch 89 on the left side of your screen, Mitchell Brinkman. He's going to run up. He's going to beat that coverage. Now, they, look at how open he is. That's a first down. I think uh, as Childers develops, he'll get his eyes to where they need to be and find that. Just the eighth start of his career after taking over those duties back on October 14th. And a nice punt angled toward the sidelines by the freshman Matt Ferentz for the Huskies. Well, NIU under Rod Carey, 0 and 4 in bowl games. And this game between the Huskies and the Blue Devils, one of six out of 39 bowl games between Power Five and Group of Five teams. And a good start coming into today for Group of Five with wins for Boise and USF. <laughs> Ramming picks up three. On the toss to the perimeter as the clock goes inside of four minutes before the half. And that was Jawan Johnson, number seven, that linebacker we've talked about several times. That one he ran to the edge and made the tackle. He's all over the field. Jones with a pump now tests the sidelines and delivers it beautifully to Ramming just inside the defender as he steps out of bounds. That was a big time throw right there. It had touch on it. It was a split second decision as he pulled the ball down. He saw that corner jump up and he laid it out perfectly. That's a big time throw. 
I like that one. It looked good, and it gets him inside the 40. Pressure from the backside, a fastball to the edge. Jones stands tall and is able to make something out of nothing with Sean Wilson. Yeah, I've seen Jones do this on, on film several occasions. He's so good at knowing where the check down is. So he's looking deep. He wants that deep one. That's not there. He checks the intermediate one. That's not there. All right, time's up. He knows where he has an outlet, and he drops it out to the edge. Wilson through the middle. You know what's been a fun battle to watch, too, as we saw that replay of Jones' throw? Has been between Evan Lyle, the right tackle, and Sutton Smith. Lyle, that grad transfer from Ohio State, a very welcome addition this year. Yeah, they, they, them two have been locked up and going at it pretty good. They caught Northern Illinois in a cross uh, over blitz, and that's why they popped that one through. Under pressure again, a throw to the 15-yard line, a sliding grab for Taylor, who's been a frequent target of Jones in the first half. What made that play is Taylor coming back to the football. He's able to close it down and watch how far he comes back to get the ball. That's almost impossible to defend. On first and ten with Wilson as his lead blocker, Jones tucks and runs. Score here would be big for Duke with under two minutes to go in the half because they won the toss and deferred. So they're set up to receive the ball to start the third quarter. And they, what they want to try to do if they can is not leave Northern Illinois a, a whole bunch of time at the end of this. But the Huskies. Second charge time out of the half, Northern Illinois. This will be a 30 second timeout. The Huskies just realized that as well. <laughs> they're saying we want some time left here on the back end of this deal. Adnan Verk in the studio. What do we got coming up at the half? Adnan, thank you very much. Yo. West Virginia, we were watching that game up here on the big board before this one got going. No Will Greer, that's a huge difference for that offense. I, I thought it was uh, the Hamilton Ticats. The, the <laughs> uniforms looked exactly like them. Chris Chuganov, not the same option as Will Greer at quarterback for WVU. So after the timeout here, second and seven, Blue Devils can still pick up another first down inside the red zone. Love we'll to go to the tight end in this area. They drop it off for Wilson, the running back, with a big blocker in front, and he ramrods his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Duke with Lyle, the right tackle, leading the way. And, and I tell you what, Albert Smalls had no chance with Lyle coming down the field after him. You're talking about a six foot seven, 310 guy going after a six footer that weighs just under 200. And that's not going to work out too well for the little guy very often. Grad transfer from Ohio State, who played in all 13 games for the Buckeyes last year. He's going to go for two here, it looks like. Yep, after that missed extra point and try and extend their lead to 28-14. I don't like this. I, I, to me, you get your points when you can get your points. Chasing points is, is a, that's a dead end, baby. Unless you make it. Boy. Then it looks great. Back of the end zone. And the pass into the arms of Jawan Johnson instead. So, your first prediction looks a lot better, Rick. Yes, and what they tried to do was catch the tight end on a, kind of a sneak throwback. So, watch the tight end on the right, number 80. You're going to see Helm. He's going to block, and then he's going to release and try to sneak through. But Northern Illinois was right on it. They had him covered. There was nowhere, really, for Jones to throw the football. Nevertheless, a pretty good drive for him, though. Five for five for 54 yards through the air. And the touchdown from 11 yards out to the running back, Wilson. Yeah, and I think that's what uh, the Blue Devils have settled on. they got to throw the football. Northern Illinois, the way they're deploying and filling the box, the running game wasn't there, hasn't been that great for them. They'll open it up by the intermediate and short passing game, which is exactly what happened in that last drive. It's a game of runs here. 
Duke started out on a 14-0 run, aided by an ill-advised fake punt pass from its own end zone for NIU, which was quickly turned into seven. Then the Huskies answered back, getting some big plays through the air to tie the game at 14. And now it's Duke with 12 unanswered with what looks like will be one more opportunity before the break for NIU. D.J. Brown going across the field, and he probably went further east-west than he did north on uh, that one. So one time out here for the Huskies, and a long field to work with. Yeah, not the field position they wanted, and I don't like punt return, or excuse me, kickoff returns that go laterally. They, they never seem to bust it, and then there wasn't a whole lot of blocking on that one no. for them either, to be honest with you. So they'll have to go, uh, what, 80, 88 yards if they want to get a touchdown. In the next minute, 27, with one timeout remaining and a freshman quarterback. And if they're not successful, Duke has the ability to stop the clock with all three timeouts. Yeah, if, if I'm Coach Cutcliffe, you stop him on this first down, I'm going to burn my timeouts and, and put the pressure on him. A two receiver look to start the drive. And a run left for Harbison. You bet you Duke just took their first time out. They're, they're not going to let uh, Northern Illinois just slide into first the First charge time out of the half, Duke. This will be a 30-second timeout. Certainly not going to make it easy with the Blue Devils set to receive the second half kickoff as well. Uh, they're going to try and uh, put another nail in the deal. We'll remind you, New Year's Day, we've got the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. Number two, Oklahoma, and number three, Georgia, with the first Rose Bowl without a Big Ten or Pac-12 team in 16 years. That's at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific. And then number one, Clemson, and number four, Alabama, in the Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app as those two teams meet up for the third straight year. Am I the only one who thinks Alabama's going to get after Clemson? Are they feeling uh, just, a little, a little uh, hungry? Yeah, it's hard to beat a team consistently. I, I think they're going to have it in their crawl a little bit. Should be another timeout here for Duke. Second charge timeout of the half, Duke. This will be a 30-second timeout. Now, last year it was the title game for Clemson. Reverse that outcome in 2015 in favor of Alabama. And here's what the Clemson offense has done the last two years against the Crimson Tide. And the Clemson defense has been mighty strong as well. Their pass rush leading FBS with 44 sacks. It's just going to be another great game. I know that. And I love it when the big boys match up against each other. So often you, you see them play somebody and they blow them out and you, you don't get to really see what they're made of necessarily. When they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with another big boy, that's worth watching. So are you saying that you were in favor of Alabama being in as the last team? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I, I, I thought it was a no-brainer, particularly after what they did with Ohio State last year. The same yep. thing. Harbison with a first down. Northern Illinois is probably going to be content to just run that clock out. They did give them the first. You're right about that. Unless they, you know, pop one and get some decent field position. You really don't want to turn the ball over in this area of the field, that's for sure. Not necessarily rushing to get back to the line here with just 50 seconds left before halftime. Play calling suggests so far that they're okay down 26 to 14, not willing to gamble on their last drive of the half. Yeah, I think that's that's smart. That's what you need to do, and they, they'll have to snap it one more time. That play clock ahead of the game clock. Well, they're here because they went eight and four. They're in the regular season, snapping their bowl streak. Last year, not making a bowl after going to eight straight from 2008 to 2015. One of the problems last year was their defense. 
which they uh, really paid a lot of attention to in the offseason and turned it around. The defense led this year's edition of the Northern Illinois Huskies. Yeah, vastly improved for NIU. That's the end of the first quarter. Direction, the end of the first half. So it's Duke 26, Northern Illinois 14 with the Blue Devils set to get the ball to start the third quarter. It's time for our halftime report, and we go to the studio to get you set up around the rest of Bowl Mania with Adnan. We'll get him over here. Yeah, whatever he's done. We'll get One Bowl Mania. Welcome back to the Quick Lane Bowl here at Ford Field in Detroit as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. 26-14 is our score at the half with Duke looking for win number seven on the year out in front of Northern Illinois at eight and four. My cousins Ray Bentley, Allison Williams, glad to have you back here with us and thanks for making us a part of your holiday season. Duke, the winners of the opening coin toss, they deferred. And that turned into a couple of three and outs on the opening drives for Northern Illinois. And now the Huskies kick it away. And a short kick as Wilson comes up to get on top of it. Thanks so much for being with us. Mike and Ray up here in the booth. Game of run so far, 14 one way, 14 the other way for NIU, and Duke with the last 12. Right, so it's Northern Illinois' turn, right? And, and to do so, they, their quarterback, Childers, has to keep throwing the ball deep. That's what opened up their offense a little bit. For Duke, I think the, the short passes and then mix in the run, that offense is, is uh, matriculating along pretty good. It was a nice first half throwing the ball for Jones, and the quarterback, sophomore, their leading rusher in the first half as well as he went for 28 yards. Now he rolls out, throws incomplete on first down. It'll be second and 10, and that allows us to visit with Allison. Hey there, guys. Well, you know, NIU's defense has Sutton Smith, who leads the country in sacks, but he's been held in check so far. A big reason for that, head coach Rod Carey said, is what Duke has been able to do, the attention they're paying to him, how they're sliding their offensive line. But he said he's gotten close. The biggest thing they can do to try and get him uh, set loose is to be better on early down so they put Duke in some passing situations. And exactly what they've got here on second down and 10. Run off to the left side and a broken tackle for Wilson. Huge space out toward midfield where he's finally cornered. Yeah, he ran right through the arm tackle from Jalen Embry, the safety. Watch number three come downhill, fills the gap, but he doesn't bring his legs with him. And if you're going to try an arm tackle, Sean Wilson, yeah, that's what's going to happen. 31 yards on the run for Wilson, who surges past Jones to be the Blue Devils' leading rusher today. That's probably the third or fourth time today where Jones has tried to make a check down or a quick throw, and it's been off target or just a little bit too strong. Yeah, and a couple of times on that bubble screen where, you know, if, there, if I say any criticism on Jones, a little more touch on some of the, the shorter throws, <laughs> he'll try to throw it right through you. Bounce went off Chris Taylor earlier. Another second and ten. Those long strides carry him to a first down, scooting past Michael Allen, the safety. What a great call and, and great timing to do that. Sutton Smith was on a crash from the inside, and then the only other guy there was Bobby Jones, and he had man-to-man -man coverage, so they basically vacated the area where Jones ran. 16 yards for number 17, the redshirt sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. Chance to add to their lead on this drive. Pocket collapsing, ball comes loose, and the Huskies fall on top of it. 
Devin Webster, the junior, there to pick up the loose ball surrendered by Jones. Well, not the best play for Daniel Jones, and that would be an understatement. First of all, he's got his tight end, Daniel Helm, open on the corner route. All he had to do was throw it right then when he started to panic and took off running. And then he made a classic error where he did not protect the football. And I know that's what Coach Cutcliffe is talking to him about right now. If you're going to pull it down, you've got to pull it down with both hands and protect it and put it away. But all that could have been avoided if he had just thrown the ball to Helm, who was wide open. Could have been a touchdown. So this erases a window of opportunity that Duke had to add to its already sizable lead and puts the Huskies right back into it. Christian Blake makes the catch. Gets leveled to the 36-yard line. I almost have to laugh because Mark Gilbert, the corner, you know, they've been beaten over top a couple of times now. Yeah. When those receivers come off the line, they are bailing hard, and that's what made Blake so open because Gilbert wasn't going to get beat deep again. It was the Huskies driving this way on both of those big passes down the field to open things up for their two scores. Harbison's the back, Brinkman the tight end who came in motion to help set up some blocking for the run. Out to the 40-yard line. And enough for the first down NIU. This uh, center for Northern Illinois, Luke Shively, he is throwing bodies around today. He just took somebody and, and just heaved them out of the hole. And I, I didn't see a lot of that on film, but I've seen Shively getting it done today. Leader on an offensive line that made some changes in their starting rotation coming into this game, putting Ben Olsen at left guard and moving Jordan Steckler from left guard over to right tackle today. All sorts of time for a heave down the middle of the field. Another big play through the air for the Huskies. Jawan Wesley, the recipient again. Flat out blown coverage in the Duke secondary. They totally lost. Uh, the slot player, Wesley, I mean, there's nobody around him. You look in that picture, uh, there was no two Blue Devils, and this is right down the middle of the field. And, you know, what they got burnt, basically, the safety jumped the in route, and that left the seam wide open. Wesley's got two huge catches today. A touchdown for 67, and this one for 42 yards to get him into the red zone. Childers on the slant, incomplete for Spencer Tears. And that's why Mark Gilbert's such a great corner. I mean, he, he was the top vote getter for all cornerbacks for all ACC honors this year. And the reason is plays like that, where he's able to just, at the end, with perfect timing, without interfering, rip the ball out, get the arms, and just make it impossible for that ball to be caught. You're right, he's horizontal by the time the ball gets there. Yeah, his timing is, is what makes him uh, that. That in his DNA, because Sean Gilbert is uh, a relative, an uncle, and his another cousin is Darrell Rivas, so he's got a good bloodline. So you're saying you don't want to find yourself on Gilbert Island? No. <laughs> Gilligan's maybe, but not Gilbert. <laughs> At least if you end up on Gilligan's Island, you're with a millionaire. Yeah, and it, it was only a three-hour <laughs> tour. I can do anything for three oh, hours. Oh, yeah. Oh, Thurston Howell. Here's third and nine. Childers has time. Short pass and a quick tackle. Michael Carter, the freshman, makes quick work of Brown. Yeah, and they were trying to hit Harbison on a shoot route out of the backfield, running up the sidelines on a little bit of a wheel look. He's coming right at you, and that's not there. Good coverage by Duke. And all Childers could do was dump it down to his check down, Brown. So Duke trying to keep a streak alive from the last two games of the regular season. Neither Georgia Tech nor Wake Forest scored a touchdown in their respective games in the second half against Duke. This field goal try from 39 yards. It's another fake. And another fake that goes terribly wrong for the Huskies. I think it was more of a low snap. And uh, the holder... Josh Horn, who is not the normal holder. That's Chad Beebe, who's a normal holder. He's not playing today. And Orn, it looked like he just didn't have the confidence that he could get it down. That snap was low and inside a little bit. So he just took off. 
those are the, the little things that, that that month off that you take, it can really erode some of your special teams. ESPN Capital One Bowl Mania continues with a pair of games for Eastern. The PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, number 11, Washington, takes on Saquon Barkley and number 9, Penn State. And then at 8, number 6, Wisconsin, against 10th-ranked Miami in the Capital One Orange Bowl, a home game at Hard Rock Stadium, with both games available on the ESPN app. So who would have thought that your holder would have made such a difference in a game, but not having Chad Beebe has been a big one today. My cousins Ray Bentley and Allison Williams with you here at the Quick Lane Bowl in Detroit. Jones for Taylor on first down. And Daniel Jones anticipated a blitz as you see Chad Beebe. I, I played with his dad, Don Beebe, with the Buffalo Bills back in the day. And uh, one thing BB, BB's have is speed. Those are some fast dudes. Uh, that's a guy who's battled through shoulder injuries, knee injuries, a broken arm. Unfortunate for him to be out today with an abdominal injury. Brown met by Michael Allen, the redshirt senior from Detroit. A home game for him. I had a Martin Luther King High School here in Detroit. Excited to be back home. Got chased down by Sutton Smith to the edge, and then Allen, the hometown boy, sticks up there and puts his chest on a running back. He said he was excited to come back here, get some food from Coney Island, nine-piece yeah. dinner, Texas toast, chili cheese fries, and to top it off, the extra-large pink lemonade. He obviously knows what he's doing. <laughs> well, whenever Jones has been able to carry, whether it's been through the middle or around the edge, he's had a pretty good successory today. Yeah, and, and I don't know if Northern Illinois is just ignoring the quarterback or if they're missing the assignment, but several times, and that time Smith was able to run him down, but not until he got a first down. Several times Jones has gone off the edge and there's nobody home. Pass rush slow to get there. First tackler misses, and then the throw goes high out of bounds. Bobby Jones, the outside linebacker, nearly brought Daniel Jones down. Keeping up with the Joneses on that one. This, this is a, another example of Daniel Jones knowing where people are. And he was still in the pocket, but he knew he had a receiver on, on a check down off to that right side so he could throw it away over there. Jones with the option, he keeps it and goes shoulder first out of bounds. That's another first down. That was supposed to be an RPO. He was going to try to throw that football, and he lost the handle on it when he started to scramble. And so he just tucked it away and took off. And they have done a nice job of stymieing, they being Duke, stymieing this Husky attack, which they, they usually play on the other team's side of the, uh, the football. Tackle finally made at the end of the play by McKelty Williams, the safety. Jones continues to have his way. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the key to stopping a running quarterback on this zone read stuff is eye discipline for the defense. And right now, they're, they're not, uh, somebody who's got quarterback is not showing up. I don't know exactly who it is. And then when they do get there, they're missing tackles. Yep, three of them on that run for Jones. The, the bugaboo that got him in, towards the end of the season. The missed tackles was the. You know, we talked to Kevin Kane, the defensive coordinator, and he must have said missed tackles a half dozen times. So we got the point. Bothered him quite a bit. And they gave up some big plays against Central Michigan in that finale as they surrendered a halftime advantage where they had held the Chippewas to negative yardage. For a much improved defense, statistically speaking, this year, they've missed 18 tackles today. That is a lot. If you miss, if you keep it down around five, you had a really good game. You get over 10, and you need some work. That right there is one of the bigger impact plays Sutton Smith has made today. Take a look at Smith. He's got the quarterback, but. The strength of Daniel Jones. Most guys would have been sacked. 
he's strong enough to hum it out there and at least live to fight another down. NIU sixth best in the country on getting stops on third down this year. Fastball over the middle, tight end, a safety net. Davis Copenhaver, the junior from California, first down. And Northern Illinois played a cover two. And a lot of times you go cover two, that tight end in the middle, that's a hard cover, and that's exactly what they got right there. With the empty backfield, it's Brown around the edge. Couldn't stay in bounds. Looks like Jones fixed that throw, though. That, that's the one that he's been uh, missing on a little bit, the, the quick flare to the edge. He threw this one perfectly. But they couldn't quite outflank the NIU defense. Now second and goal from the seven. Prime spot for tight ends. Who have caught four of the six passes thrown their way today. Through the middle, the run continues to be the answer. Just short for Brown, angling for the goal line. And I thought Julian Santos, the left guard, did an outstanding job. He really got two blocks. He's going to get a, a help on the nose with the center and then he comes up and takes out the linebacker and that's what opened up that hole in the middle. Nice job by Julian Santos, the sophomore guard. That may well have been a touchdown. They're gonna look at this one. I thought it was. The ruling on the field is that the runner was down prior to the fumble. The previous play is under review. So the question for Ron Leatherwood, the replay official, will be was the, a knee down on that stretch or an elbow before the ball broke the plane of the goal line? Yeah. I, I thought he was in myself. I, I was think, ready to call a touchdown. Yeah, I, I, was, I thought you had. <laughs> yeah, that's a touchdown. That ball didn't come out until he hit the ground. My humble opinion. I don't see anything else of his body on the ground. It's like the ball is what hit first. Do we see? No, and, no knee on the ground right there, but oh. he's already over the, the goal line. Yeah. I, that's a touchdown. The ball came out once it hit the ground. He's already he's down once it hits the ground, and he's broke the plane. That's six to me. The officials need indisputable video evidence, and fortunately there are plenty of clear angles to get a good look at that call of the goal line. Yeah, and it's all about you know, when that knee went down as opposed to when the ball broke the plane. You only have to break the front of, the, of that white stripe, right? and you're in. And... Uh, I know he's getting talked to about holding the football high and tight when he goes in the end zone, and that's nice to say, but sometimes it's a good play to stick it After over After review, the runner crossed the goal line prior to the fumble. The ruling is a touchdown. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 6.58. 6.58 on the game clock. Make your touchdown call now. Touchdown. touchdown. It's a little bit more Thank subdued. 32-14. Yeah. <laughs> The score was 6.58 left here in the third quarter. I could have just let you do it for practice. Yeah, well. That was a very quick no from you. Yeah. You're very comfortable in the yeah, analyst I, role. I, I did. I, I, used to, <laughs> I used to do your job, and the problem was it was too much of a job. Me, I'm having fun. I'm the guy in the back of the bus throwing spit wads around, and you're driving it. So. Yes, this is a very arduous job yeah. to sit in a chair and talk about sports. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> Well, it's been an interesting day for Holmquist. He and the starter here. An interesting note on him, he, he's hearing impaired. One of three uh, college football players that are hearing impaired in our country. Yeah, he wears hearing aids normally, doesn't wear them in action. He likes what he sees. This team extends its lead 33-14. Quick lane bowl. Brought to you by the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back. Every purchase, everywhere. Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. And those that live like a pro. GMC. Quick lane ball involved in the season of giving with Gleaners Community Food Bank that distributes food for more than 90,000 meals a day around Southeast Michigan. And 
The last three years with this game, efforts have helped to feed over 26,000 families. Mike Cousins, Ray Bentley, Allison Williams back here with you in Detroit. The quick lane ball and a touchdown for Duke. Makes their lead 33-14. So they've gone on an extended run here. Let's see if the Huskies can get something on the kick return. They've only averaged 14 yards per return today. And that's fed into some of their tough starting field position. DJ Brown breaks the longest one of the evening for NIU. And they'll get rolling right near midfield. That's a big return by Brown. And he got some excellent blocking that time. Big difference. I'm pretty sure that kick return team got an earful after the last return. And they responded. What would you like to see them do better on offense? I want them to keep throwing the ball deep. That's that's where their success has been, and that's opened up other things. So keep taking them shots. I would take one right here, first play of the series, and catch them napping. And this is about the spot on the field where they do like to take their deep shots. That was too much. But the defense, perhaps, was a little bit too much as well on Spencer Tears, guarded by the very tough Gilbert. I want to see that again because I didn't notice any particular uh, contact. I might have had a hand on him. Pass interference. Defense, number 28. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. The other part of that, that ball was thrown very high. I don't know that that was thing was even close to being catchable. But nonetheless, move the chains. Northern Illinois trying to respond. Don't see it on that angle, but how about a grab of the shoe there for Singleton, bringing Blake down? By the way, that penalty was just the second to hit the turf today. Yeah, it's been a real clean game in that regard, and, and uh, it's kind of rare, actually, when you take, think about all the time that they had off. We've seen some mistakes in the kicking game today, but very clean in regards to penalties. Childers at the sideline. Feet inbounds for Spencer Tier. So when you said you would expect a few more penalties today, maybe penalties of aggression from having not played for so long? Yeah, a little more and more I'm thinking of uh, procedural things, little things like uh, false starts, offsides, those kind of mind busts. Harbison trying to plunge through the line on third down. He doesn't get it, so it's fourth down. And with a gap of 33 to 14, no question about it, the Huskies keep the offense on the field. And it was Joe Giles Harris, the big inside linebacker, stepped into that hole, had some help from Carter, and they got him down. This is a critical play for Northern Illinois if they want to stay in this ballgame. They got an unbalanced line into the boundary. Now they're flopping. Tears and Blake, the receivers. And Blake goes in motion on fourth down. Childers the rollout, looking for the throwback. It's too high, off the hands of Crawford. And another turnover on downs. They did the old sneak the tight end through. Actually, it was the wing. Tight end stayed in and blocked. They snuck the wing through on the backside, trying for a little throwback. And the ball was just a little hot. Duke, 33, Northern Illinois, 14. Duke by 19 here late third quarter at the Quick Lane Bowl in Detroit. It's been a big day for Willie Holmquist, the grad transfer kicker who's gotten the most action of his career, one of just three deaf players in FBS. And now down in the stands, here's Allison with his family. Thank you very much, Mike. Yes, I'm with his mom, Maria, his dad, Kelvin. And Maria, I want to start with you. When you reflect on Willie's journey to be here today playing in a bowl game and have your son, the primary kicker out there, what are the emotions you're feeling? Uh, you know, nervousness, of course. You know, you always wonder, you know, how he's going to do. But it's exciting. It's, uh, you know, and it's a privilege to have him play. And uh, we know how much he loves it, so it makes it that much more, uh, you know, it's exciting for us. Kelvin, how would you describe the way your son has attacked some of the challenges he's faced growing up and not let them stop him? Well, I mean, obviously he was born with a serious healing loss, but 
uh, honestly, um, you know, that's that's been his journey. A lot of people have a lot of struggles. They work through them. I'm not minimizing it at all. He's done just terrifically well. Uh, and we couldn't be more proud of him. We couldn't be more proud of, you know, his teammates, his coaches, the fact that they kept him on the radar. It's been a fantastic experience. Look at all this stuff here. It's crazy. What I thought was so interesting is that while Willie does wear hearing aids, he decides to take them out for football games. What was your reaction when he shared with you that he was going to be doing that? Well, I'm actually not surprised because there is a lot of ambient loud noise. So I think it actually focuses him to sort of cut that out. And, you know, he's... But he originally did it to yeah. drown out the heckling. Right. Yeah, that's true, yes. He did do that. Yeah, it was interesting to hear him say that it, it, it helps him focus out there. And he really has done a terrific job. I know you both are so very proud. Thank you for, uh, Thank for making you. some time Thank for you. us. Mike. Allison, thanks for helping to share that story. First down picked up by Daniel Helm. Holmquist, the transfer, came from Tufts in July as a grad transfer where he played in 2013, 15, and 16. Didn't see the field in 2014 because of injury. And so he's a walk-on this year, enrolled in the very uh, prominent business school at Duke. And didn't necessarily expect to be getting the opportunity he's been getting today, save for the starter ahead of him being kicked off the team because of an academic violation. Yeah, Austin Parker, he got the boots and that opened the door for Holmquist. That door almost was open there for a, a touchdown, but Alotu was able to make a nice play. And they're discussing something on the field. The flag came out late. There's no foul on the play for pass interference. It'll be second down. There's no call in my opinion. And on this drive, Duke has started to go a little bit deeper into its stable of running backs. Sean Wilson on the sideline, 29, behind David Cutcliffe. And in the backfield, Deion Jackson, the freshman out of Atlanta, now joining Jones, has already touched the ball on this drive. And carries it high here, just about to back to the line of scrimmage. An historic day, though, rushing-wise for Duke because today marks the first time in Duke's history that for a season, they've had three players with 500 or more rushing yards. Sean Wilson, just shy of 800. Britton Brown, just a tick under 700. And Daniel Jones surpassing the 500 yard mark early. And Jones, leading rusher in the ball game with 84 yards on 11 carries and a touchdown. Third down, looking to set up the screen. Couple bobbles, the catch for Copenhaver. And there, that was a what I call a zero screen. There was zero guys out in front blocking. Oh, I thought you meant zero yards. Yeah, well, that too. <laughs> it was zero from the get go. And now here comes Holmquist on to punt. Average 37 yards a kick during his three years on the field at Tufts. That's pretty amazing. You go from no position to having two positions. Both the punter and the place kicker today. And Ant Court's a nice spiral. That's going to end up inside the 10-yard line. Well, no heckling after that one. <laughs> Mom and Dad certainly happy. And you can tell just how supportive they've been throughout his journey. A unique one, to be sure. I love good stories like that of people overcoming things. You know, that, that's what life's about, right? You're going to face challenges, and that, that's the great thing I got from the game of football. How to keep fighting through and, and keep working and keep keep at it and do it long enough, and you're going to be successful. And that's the thing I love about the game of football. First down and 10 from their own six. This Husky squad in a bowl game for the ninth time in the last 12 or the last 10 seasons in their 12th overall as a D1 program missed a bowl last year after a MAC record eight straight bowls from 2008 to 2015. And both these teams missed the bowl season last year and fought like crazy to get back this season. 
A lofty throw to the sideline off his back foot. There was a lot of contact there from Brian Fields, the redshirt senior corner. Yeah, that's as high of a 50-50 ball as I have seen it. It reminds me of a game we used to play in the in when we were kids where they they throw the ball up and everyone would try to get it. Defense, number 14, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And Fields never found the football, and, and that's what was his problem. You gotta get your head back, especially uh, against the way Northern Illinois is throwing the deep ball. They're just lobbing it straight up in the air. It, my guys, I'm going to tell them, hey, you got to look for the ball quicker because that's the one advantage those receivers from Northern Illinois have. They're looking back at the ball. Yeah, Ray, on all the big throws downfield today, the cornerback for Duke, whomever it's been, has seemed to be a little bit lost in coverage when the ball comes down. Childers, the Mac freshman of the year, on the move. Throws to the sideline, and that's not a catch because Blake had stepped out of bounds and then came back in, but he was not eligible to touch that ball. He tried to reestablish himself, but I don't think he did. He's out of bounds. Back in. I think he's, he, he, he reestablished himself in, in bounds, both feet in. I think this is going to be a catch. But he can't be the first one to touch it because he wasn't forced out of bounds by a defender. Good point by you. Illegal touching. Offense number four. The receiver went out of bounds on his own and was the first to touch the pass in bounds. Be a loss of down from the previous spot. Second down. Exactly what you said. Yeah, good, usually good when, when you see those plays happen is on a they long throw downfield, yeah. and it's the, the, the secondary defender who forces the receiver out of bounds that time he went out of bounds on his own right if, if you get forced out and then get both feet back in then you're reestablished on the field but and you, you can, can you can then be the you, first you to touch can him. you are an eligible receiver but if you uh, take yourself out of the play, field of play and then go back in you cannot be the first one to touch it Edgar Serenor the redshirt junior defensive tackle out of Miami was the injured player the defensive lineman there for Duke So a second down and 10 from the 24 yard line coming up here for NIU. Interesting season in the MAC this year. As Toledo won the league for the first time since 2004, and five teams ended up bowl eligible. But the bowl results this year for the MAC have not been so favorable, save for the Ohio Bobcats against UAB. Yeah, they, they might go over in the rest of it here. Most surprising result probably was Toledo. Getting shut out, 34-0. That was surprising. The offense they have to get shut out, that App State defense came to play. Childers runs and gets rolled up by Ben Humphreys, who came back after missing two games with a knee injury. When he got hurt, he told his teammates that was the last snap, November 11th against Army. You got to win these last two for me so I can come back and play in the bowl, and here he is. And, and Jim Knowles told us that's his most, the defensive coordinator for Duke told us that's his most memorable moment of this year, the way the team responded after Humphreys went down, and, and immediately and throughout all the practice and the work, not just in the game. False start. Offense number 65, five-yard penalty, third down. That's the right guard, Nathan Velos. Those are the type of penalties you, you know you would expect after a month layoff. Little things like that. But it's been a very clean ball game in that regard. Uh, Coach Carey for the Huskies said a lot of their time spent during bowl practice was on individual skill work, not even necessarily bowl planning until the days leading up until the game. It'll be fourth down here. And that's something that, especially with the makeup of the Mid-American Conference schedule where you might play on a Thursday and a Saturday or a Tuesday, whatever it might be, your days can get mm -hmm. so mixed up where it might be my Friday, but it could be your Tuesday and it could be somebody else's Monday and all of a sudden your calendar's messed up and you're just worried about who you're playing next and how do you get there. Right. And, you know, it's the Mac action. It's the midweek Mac action that is Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And I call some of those games. You and I did a couple of those. and. I didn't know what day it was either. <laughs> I just knew I had to be in Kent, right. Ohio. Game starts at 7 o'clock. We've got 15 seconds left here in the third quarter with Duke going back on offense. 
leading 33-14, looking to take the title here in the Quick Lane Bowl. Don't forget, as the bowl season continues, the ESPN app is your best friend. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights from every bowl game. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. I would expect Duke to switch gears and go heavy to the run now. 19 point lead, closer to the fourth quarter here. Trying to grind it out and eat up some clock. After we saw Jackson, the freshman, running back on the last drive, they go back to Wilson, their most experienced out of the backfield, and the senior has the run for the final play of quarter number three. It was 14-0 Duke to start the game. The Huskies answered with 14 of their own. And since then, the end it's the been quarter. all Duke as the Blue Devils have 15 minutes standing in front of them and what could be a decisive victory in Detroit. Welcome back to Detroit and Ford Field. It's the Quick Lane Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Mike Cousins, Ray Bentley, and Allison Williams down on the field with 15 minutes to play as the Blue Devils of Duke look to finish with a winning record 33-14 over the Huskies of Northern Illinois. NIU kicked off their year in a big time way. Early in the season, a win over Nebraska, which was pretty impactful on both sides. It gives a lot of confidence for NIU, but how about what that did to turn the tides for both the administration yeah. and the coaching situation for Nebraska. Opened the door, so to speak. Yeah, very much so with Scott Frost going back to his alma mater, leaving UCF. So Jones tucks and runs here to open the fourth quarter with the Blue Devils in pursuit of seven and six, which would lock them up for a fourth winning season in the last five years, save last year. And it would be the best stretch for Duke since four out of five winning seasons between 1960 and 1964. And a testament to their character. And sitting at four and six, they were given an 11% chance to win out and make the bowl season. And that's exactly what they did. And in both of those games, they trailed by double digits in the first half. And they shut the opponents out. No touchdowns in the second half in either of those games. And really rescued the season. Copenhaver's been a frequent target today. Yeah, between him and Helm, it's it's two really good guys. He'll run that quick sneak here. Yeah, he's thrown his way. He didn't get it, I don't know. Five times, he's caught four, and let's... Looks like they're gonna give him a, a good mark. Yeah, they're marking him past the 40. He just had to get it to the 40. Didn't even need to peel the pile away there. Right. <laughs> Dig Daniel Jones out of the bottom of that thing. But, you know what, it was the last push at the end, which used to be illegal, if you all recall the Bush push. You can push a, a running back or a ball carrier forward, and they were they did that uh, successfully in that case. 13 carries for 92 yards today for Jones, the quarterback. You know, part of while they were losing games, he had very few carries. They, they put wraps on him a little bit. They didn't run him near as much as we've seen today, and that really hurt the offense. But they still felt with him in there, they would be more effective, even though they didn't have that running aspect of it. How much were the stunts along the defensive line key to the running game for Duke today, getting open space? Well, it's it's the way they handled the stunts, and that, that's they blocked extremely well. We've pointed out, in particular, Austin Davis, the center, who's He's in charge of all those things. When guys start moving around, that offensive line, they're, they're changing their blocks right up to the snap. And the center's the guy who's in charge of making those calls and making sure everybody's on the same page. And that's what they say that Austin Davis, a captain of this team and a third-team All-ACC player, he does that for them. Additionally impressive because their offensive line coach, Marcus Johnson, left for Mississippi State to go work for new head coach Joe Moorhead. And so Jim Bridge, the special teams and tight ends coach, took over that role here during bowl season. He bridged the gap, if you will. And I will. Yes, absolutely, Thank as you. will Sean Wilson for another first down. Some people won't. You, you will. I appreciate that. You know, I will boldly declare I don't want to be friends with anyone who won't. All right. <laughs> Glad we got that stuff. 33-14 with Duke in the lead. 
And so far, every second of the fourth quarter has belonged to them. Testing out the right side and bouncing off a tackle. It's Jones edging ever closer toward 100 yards. And this is a, an impressive uh, performance for him, considering that against Wake Forest in the season finale, he threw for a career high 346 yards, and now he's doing it on the ground today. Yeah, and, and Northern Illinois has given that to him throughout the day. How many times have we seen him go around the edge and there's not a defender that you could name that's assigned to him, at least by looking at it? If it's working, keep running it. Does continue to work. Wilson down to the 28-yard line. Yeah, and his quickness made Antonio Jones Davis miss the tackle. Jones Davis stepped right up in where he's supposed to be, but Wilson's just too fleet of foot. He couldn't run it down. Duke controlling this game from the beginning, going up 14-0. They've now run 30 more plays, 76 to 46, and the Huskies. <laughs> And surprising to see that the defense for the Huskies has been run down like this via the run game by Duke because they were 11th best in the country in terms of rushing yards per game and that's their best number since 1963. And they've been pretty stout except for stopping the quarterback. Uh, really, to me, that's that's been the Achilles heel in terms of stopping the run. They've done pretty well on everybody but the quarterback. When I first saw Sean Wilson running around with that number 29 on, he, he reminded me of uh, Eric Dickerson, or 29 back in the day. A little, kind of a little bit of an upright running uh, form. He used to chase Dickerson around. That was no fun. Yeah, how'd that work out for yeah, you? Yeah, great. <laughs> I'm sitting by you now. Across the middle and caught. The tight end helm. Him and Copenhaver have been the unsung heroes of Duke's offense tonight. That's that's just sitting in the pocket and playing darts. And big body tight ends, those make nice targets. 13th play of the drive from the 13-yard line. Maybe got to the 12. And th this is a uh, classic drive here from Duke. The mix of the run and the pass. And, I mean, they're eating up clock big time. They, they have basically taken control of this game across the front. And their offensive line, Lyle, Harmon, Davis, Santos, and Bradner. Game balls for everybody. Now switching it up as Quentin Harris is in at quarterback. Not uncommon to see him in short yardage situations. That's his 28th carry of the year, and he's played in 10 of their 13 games. Yeah, they'll bring him in on short yardage and then also in the red zone where the quarterback run becomes uh, primary. It's a lot harder to get yards down in this condensed area, and if you let the quarterback carry the ball, it buys you another hat for blocking. He just rolled in a couple of extra linemen. Chambers and Baker come in at the guard positions. Run off to the left side. And he gets down to the seven, maybe the six yard line. It's a good sign to run to behind the redshirt senior, Gabe Brandner out of Blythewood, South Carolina, who's been a three-year starter and a guy who's been very active with community service as well, working with Habitat for Humanity, the National Inclusion Project. Willie Holmquist is going to get a shot at making a field goal here. See if a big day for him can continue from 24 yards. Right down the middle. And a flag comes in at the end of the play with 
some extra contact near the point of the kick. But mom and dad happy for the field goal make. For one of just three deaf student athletes at the FBS level, Willie Holmquist, the graduate transfer from Tufts. Had a lot put on his plate coming into this one, and looks like he's going to eat it all. After the try, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number nine against the defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 72 against the offense. Those penalties offset. Try is good. That is both, those are both players' first unsportsmanlike conduct fouls of the game. Joe Sanders and Evan Lyle got into it a little bit at the end of that play and got a little check mark next to their name for their efforts. And they always note those penalties to say it's their first because if you get second, you're done. Yeah, that's that's it for the day. And then you see the the spot that was circled there. That's that's where the whole thing started. And that's where it ended. Yeah, and that's where it ends. <laughs> Great drive for the Blue Devils. They take up half the fourth quarter, looking like winners today. Time for a look at our Bowl Challenge Cup, and it's brought to you by Progressive. The Sun Belt is the leader at the moment. Three and one record, followed by the Mountain West and then the American. The MAC today would fall to one and four, and the ACC would get its first bowl victory of the year. They haven't had any games prior to today, but the schedule certainly does pick up in the coming days. Starting tomorrow, Florida State tries to finish off its season with a winning record. They'd have a win for Southern Miss in that game would give Florida State seven losses for the first time in 42 years. So we'll try and eke out a victory there. And then BC and Iowa square off tomorrow as well. It should be a good ball game. Yeah, Iowa has not had great bowl success as of late. Boston College has been one of the better rushing teams in the country. Their last six games, over 200 yards on the ground in each one behind A.J. Dillon, the freshman, second leading rusher in the league. So 7.30 to go in the fourth, and let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Allison again. Hey, Allison. One term you'll hear a lot with this Duke defense is smart swarming. Basically, they want their defensive linemen to swarm, but to do so within their assignments and fits. And right now, coaches feel like they're not doing a good job of that. D-line coach Ben Elbert told his guys, you're just running all over the place. You have to stay in your lane. You're beating people, but you have to remember your assignments and work together as a four-man unit to bring the quarterback down. Yeah, that silly swarming does not work, Allison, I promise you. You got to be smart about it. And if you go to Duke, that would be expected. One would hope the smart comes with the swarming. <laughs> Alliteration always welcome here. It's Marcus Jones who takes it, the redshirt sophomore from Evergreen Park, Illinois. As we approach seven minutes, here we're the fourth quarter with Duke out in front. I think Childers has to throw the football more. I mean, he's only 17 attempts in this ball game. Now, he's hit 11 of them for 211 yards and a touchdown. Now, those are good numbers, especially with this deficit. I think they should have gone to the air this entire second half. They haven't really done so. Bellows, the right guard, came off injured, so he gets replaced by the redshirt junior, Dale Brown on this drive. Here's the deep shot. A couple of receivers in the area and out inside the 10, the ball is incomplete. Christian Blake, the senior, getting underneath it. That was a great throw and Blake had that in his hands. I mean, there's no reason for him to drop that one. That, that was the best deep ball thrown all day by Childers. He might be better off just throwing them balloons and letting them jump for him. Because this one was right on the money. And if not for some late contact there from the safety, Jordan Hayes, Blake may have been able to complete the catch. They need five for a first down with the choice to run or throw. Childers throws too tall for Crawford, and it's fourth down and five. And a little pop pass off the play action and good tight coverage. Uh, Byron Fields was all over Crawford, and that didn't really allow 
Childers to get it in there. He would have had to touch it up, and if he had done that, the safety coming over the top had a shot at it. It's been a very active day for the secondary, whether it's been Gilbert or Singleton, Carter, Fields. Yeah, they've been flying around making plays. And here comes a huge blitz up the middle. It gets to Childers and brings him down back at the 40-yard line. Derek Tangelo leads the charge of blue and white defenders. And that was what you call a house blitz, where you're going to bring the house. And they bring both safeties up into the mix late. And the offensive line kind of freaked out. And so they, they didn't end up blocking big number 54. And Tangelo gets home with his first career sack as a true freshman. A timeout here in Detroit with 6.35 to go. The Quick Lane Bowl, brought to you by Quick Lane Tire and Auto Centers, offering extraordinary service for routine maintenance. Quick Lane, ready to serve. And Infinity, empower the drive. It looked in Detroit. I would like to quote what Allison tweeted earlier today. I think she said something along the lines of thankful for a dome. Because it's <laughs> yeah. really cold outside. Oh. <laughs> Bitter. It was what, what negative one? Got as low as negative man. one today, yeah. Allison Williams down on the field with Ray Bentley. I'm Mike Cousins. And we're glad you're with us here. Winding things down fourth quarter with Duke all over NIU today. How about that back foot? Daniel Helm has been so reliable today over the middle of the field. It's a security bank blanket for Daniel Jones because, I mean, he's back there and he's got he's running out of options. This thing is going south on him. He's got people coming after him. It breaks open late, and that's the perfect throw. Up high where only his guy can get it, and then the timing of the jump, outstanding from Daniel Helm. Bobby Jones, the linebacker, swerves over, cut down Britton Brown. Six minutes here, fourth quarter, and looking forward for both of these teams, which that's what a lot of bowl season is, is thinking about the future, getting in those two and a half, three weeks of extra practices you wouldn't otherwise be permitted by the NCAA. And just strictly speaking at quarterback, you have Jones, a redshirt sophomore, and on the other side, Childers, who's only started eight games in his career counting today, both of these teams have to be very optimistic about that position specifically. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and football is so quarterback-driven in the modern game. Uh, you've got to have that guy if you're going to have a chance. Brown wrestled to the ground, going toward the outside by Trayshawn Foster, the sophomore from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Foster, he wasn't very nice about that. No. <laughs> that, that, that was a, an aggressive tackle. I liked it. Foster wasn't playing around here. That's how you get a man. Once again, look for a Duke tight end on this situation. And those are the guys they like to get it to, and they got them stacked together at the bottom. They help lead the charge on blocking for the run for Brown. His brother, Blaise, is a junior defensive back at Troy. They already had a win, a nice one over North Texas in the New Orleans Bowl. This is a really nice run of just shifting in the hole, forcing a brash to miss. And Brown has got those kind of lateral quicks to be able to do that. Now second down. Northern Illinois, not a big blitz team. They'll blitz situationally, and, and this area is one they like to do it in the red zone and in third and longs. But on the season, just 24% blitz from this Husky team. And, and they play it straight up. They like to play man on the edges and load the box and force you to beat them through the air. And unfortunately for them, Daniel Jones has been up to the task today. Still two tight ends set, both off to the right side. The Blue Devils have not been afraid to go away from the run, but consistent with it here as Johnson comes up to make the stop. 
Well, what Rod Carey said he wanted this team to do was to be able to make Duke one-dimensional today. And unfortunately, Duke was very one-dimensional, but it was the opposite of yeah. what they wanted. It was on the ground rather than through the air. Don't forget, after the game is over, you can stick around and watch ESPN3 for the post-game trophy ceremony. It's brought to you by Capital One, and that's immediately following the game down on the field for the trophy presentation. Duke just let that time meander off the clock and then took the timeout. Face a third and goal here from the nine. With 2.51 left in the fourth. The Cactus Bowl, concussion symptoms for Josh Rosen, perhaps holding him out, and maybe his last college game. And I heard somebody talking about it being a game-time decision. It's a concussion. <laughs> what, he's going to be better all of a sudden at game time? It doesn't make sense. Could be the last game for K-State head coach Bill Snyder as well. So a lot of intrigue in the desert. That game coming your way next. And off for Jackson, trying to turn the corner. Cut down at the 10-yard line. It'll be fourth down here and give us an opportunity to introduce you to tonight's Capital One player of the game. And it's a guy who we all know pretty well at this point, Daniel Jones. Yeah, what an outstanding day for Daniel Jones. You see the numbers, very close to 100 yards. And he took control of this ball game. It was his play more so than anything else that uh, gave Duke this comfortable lead here. Almost 100 yards on the ground for him. 252 through the air to follow up on a game where he threw for 346 in the regular season finale. But he got picked off three times in that game against Wake today. No picks. Very clean game. No turnovers whatsoever. And Duke's letting that clock wind down again. And they're going to burn another timeout or set up their, their uh, field goal. I would think they would kick a field goal here. And we'll see what they do when we return to Detroit. Just went by Well, if the national championship game of the college football playoff wasn't exciting enough, stay tuned for halftime as well with Kendrick Lamar. We've got a 36-14 ball game. Here in the quick lane bowl, 2.04 to go. And it's fourth down. Duke keeps the offense on the field here. And instead of going for the field goal. And Jones goes down. Pressure off the edge. Bobby Jones makes the sack on Jones. And they overloaded that side. They brought Sutton Smith in on an inside uh, move. And he got uh, special attention. And that left Bobby Jones wide open. No one touched him. No one picked him up. And Duke turns it over on down. Curious decision to me. I, I would have had Holmquist come out and, and uh, have, have another field goal attempt. Let him give it a go. He's three for four on the extra points today. Was already perfect on a field goal try. I suppose the points weren't necessary. And so maybe Coach Cutcliffe was trying not to run it up. But then if you get the touchdown, what does that say? So I don't know, man. More questions than answers on that one. Tonight after the Cactus Bowl of K-State and UCLA, tune in to Sports Center with Nicole Briscoe and Neil Everett. They'll have a conversation with Clemson head coach Davo Sweeney on why this year's journey has been so much harder than last year's. Hey, they won the title last year, by the way. By the Cavs and Isaiah Thomas on what hurt him most about being traded from Boston and the best moments from tonight's bowl games at Sports Center, 12.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Give you a good summary of the way this game went. First 11 minutes, 43 seconds. Duke 14, NIU nothing. All of a sudden, you think, well, this might be a yeah, little bit one-sided. We were nervous. Then, the next six minutes or so, NIU went 14 unanswered points. So you've All got 14-14. 
but in the 40 minutes that have followed, it's been Duke with 22 straight points, and that'll prove to be the difference here in the 2017 Quick Lane Bowl. Big play a little bit too little, too late, with Blake towing the sideline. That was a really nice run by Blake, though. Could have used that earlier. A little dance along the sidelines and made some people miss and kept fighting. That's what I want to see. They're going to find out and take another look to see if Blake stepped out of bounds when he doubled back. You get to be the judge yourself here. Boom. Yep. Out of bounds. No question about that. Can't hide that one. It's right in front of the official. Maybe too close for him to see. He'd have to be looking straight down. Although it certainly does raise the question that the replay draws the ire of a lot of people in a 36-14 game with a minute 22 to go. Is that a necessary play to review? Got to get it right, man. Right? Yeah, I see that huge smirk I, yeah, on your face. I, right? how, do you, how do you say, okay, how many points and how much time is, is when you pull the plug on the replay? It's got to be an all or nothing. I, I just, and To me, in the spirit of competition, it's a 60-minute game. You get everything you got. You fight your guts out for 60 minutes. Then you look up at the scoreboard and see what the deal is in a perfect world. Well, it's a good thing we don't live in one of those. No, we don't. Because then you could, <laughs> yeah, you could say, hey, we could skip over that one. Nevertheless, they're going to bring that one back and spot it at the 38-yard line and take away the play from Blake, the senior from Florida. Yeah, they're, they're still trying to figure out how much time on the clock, exactly what down and distance and all those things. After review, the runner stepped out of bounds at the 38-yard line. He's second down and eight. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 1.30. 1.30 on the clock. Thank and, you. And I know the officials have to go by the letter of the law. That was just one of the things on my holiday wish list that did yeah, not come true I, this year. I get you. Now 90 seconds left. Childers unloads deep into single coverage off the fingertips of D.J. Brown. I'll tell you what, I think Michael Carter got away with one there. He got, he hit Brown before that ball game came in. He never got his head around to look. And that should have been a flag. It was all over him. Did get his head around late, but after he had initiated the contact. The way they've been calling it today, I'm surprised they didn't throw that one. But maybe they heard your uh, diatribe about getting <laughs> out of here. Oh, now it's a diatribe. Yes. Oh, I went right to it. <laughs> I prefer soliloquy. It's yeah. a lot more graceful that way. I had the undertones of the diatribe, bro. I'm <laughs> telling you. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Carter, who they targeted on that deep throw that ended up incomplete, one of the guys at NIU said they wanted to go after on David Cutcliffe's squad. Yeah, that didn't work out so well for him. Carter played extremely well. And it, this is just his second start. And he stepped up senior just getting an opportunity to help the team at the end of his career that's a great story too tall from shoulders on fourth down that was the most difficult down of the day for northern illinois not able to convert on fourth downs whether it was a fake punt or a field goal snap gone awry and they are just trying to keep something alive near the end of the game with duke They've got their name on the front of the trophy already, and the Blue Devils are now just a minute 14 away from locking up their fourth winning season in the last five years. Don't forget New Year's Day. We'll have the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. you got your top four here, number two, Oklahoma, and number three, Georgia. The Heisman winner, Baker Mayfield in that one, and then number one, Clemson, number four, Alabama. That's the Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans with both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Who you got winning it all? I'm going to go with Oklahoma. Ah, you stole my thunder. That's who I'm <laughs> going with. I have to rethink it now. Why? Ah. Because, because you picked the same answer as me. Yeah. You, you implied that was a bad choice. <laughs> well, 
Yeah, that was my diatribe. <laughs> now, why do you have Oklahoma? I just think uh, the way Baker Mayfield's playing right now, the mojo they got going, I think they're going to handle Georgia. Um, and then I, I like Baker Mayfield in the, in the title game. Uh, he's a big game player. I, I'm anxious to see it. We'll see what happens. I know it's more than one guy. But that guy's pretty important and he's fun to watch. And he did lead college football this year in completion percentage, 71% completion rate. Pretty impressive. You just got to be able to play enough defense. That, that's the only question mark I would have against the Sooners. But if you get into a shooting match, we'll go with Baker. Third and final charge timeout, Duke. This will be a 30 second timeout. The Blue Devils have gone to the backup squad here. We've, this is now the third quarterback we've seen today with Parker Bame, who is usually their holder, is in at quarterback. We saw Daniel Jones, who was our player of the game, and Quentin Harris as well for a couple goal line snaps to just let the last few seconds into the hands of players who certainly don't see as much time as their counterparts. Without a doubt, empty the bench. Let these guys get out there so they can say they played in this one. It'll mean something down the road. So you and I have Oklahoma over Georgia, Clemson and Alabama. The winner of that one is going to be the first team to go to three straight title games since the Seminoles of Florida State did it 98 to 2000. Yeah, that's big time. Uh, I mean, to be able to maintain that. And I know on SportsCenter tonight they talked about a, a Dabo Sweeney interview about the second time being a harder uh, trip, harder road to take. And I can tell you from experience, getting back, repeating, that's a lot harder than winning that first one. Duke walking out of Detroit a winner, seven and six to cap off this campaign that featured a six game losing streak after a four and oh start. And Northern Illinois is done for the year at eight and five, a 36 14 final score. You can stay tuned on ESPN three for the trophy presentation down on the field as the Blue Devils will celebrate. And coming up next here on ESPN, it's the Cactus Bowl, Kansas State and UCLA. We thank you for being with us here tonight from Detroit on behalf of our entire crew, Allison Williams down on the field, and my partner, Ray Bentley. I'm Mike Cousins saying so long, and we'll send you back to the studio. Here's Adnan.